welcome to In Conversation with Himali. I begin the session with a quote. The great thing about fashion is that it always looks forward. An investment banker to a leading fashion designer, Tara Buyan, our guest, has accomplished it all. The Assamese designer from Toronto takes weeds from the villages to her wardrobes. She has showcased her collections in Washington, D.C., Toronto, Sydney, India, and in Nepal, where a model walked the ramp wearing a Tara Buan quarter a creation which won the Miss Femina India runners up in 2020, a woman's fusion wear brand that works with indigenous products and will soon be a men's and a children's brand too. Welcome, Tara, and thank you so very much for agreeing to talk about your successful journey and that too in a very short time. Tell us a little more about yourself, you know, from, from an investment banker um, for two decades to, to an enterprising fashion designer. How has all this happened? Namaskar. Thank you, Himali, for having me here. I'm really honored to be with Singapore today and it's evening for me at uh, it's around 8 p.m. now must be morning for you right yes it's a bright sunny morning here so we yeah. are about 12 hours apart from Toronto to Singapore right. so uh, yeah I'm glad to be here and uh, thank you yes um, my journey has been very long and very sweet journey all throughout uh, mm -hmm. I never regretted any of my jobs that I have helped and I'm holding now uh, yes, I have been always an investment. I've been a banker all throughout my life. And um, since I was 19, I started with the portfolio trading and uh, mm -hmm. heading up to Royal Bank of Canada and mm -hmm. worked there for many, many years. And uh, I'm very proud to be a part of that entity. But now I'm a designer. Yes, that passion was always with me. Mm -hmm. uh, since I was 19, Himali, I used to be actually 17 years. That fashion wasn't with me okay. uh, because I was a fashion model and I did a lot of choreography for uh, competitions and inter universities okay. competitions in Mumbai. I was living up in Mumbai, India. Uh -huh. So that was fun doing it. Uh, but that uh, spirit or that passion or that dream was uh, always with me. And I had I knew I had to do something different. Yeah. Uh, I knew I had to go out of my comfort zone and my cushy job. And uh, that's when uh, someone, uh, I had I started with a show, a small show in Toronto, uh, which mm -hmm. is called uh, Assam Sangha Community in Toronto. I started with the Bihu, our annual, uh, like the West Haki program we have, it's called the Bihu. Oh, right. And I started my little, uh, fashion show there uh, with inspiration from the members there and that's how it started and it never stopped from there Beautiful. but uh, truthfully speaking um, going back to where my grandma mm -hmm. uh, that's where it all starts uh, my really? grandma was also a pioneer in uh, empowering women especially in the weaving after she met Mahatma Gandhi when he visited Assam uh, he personally went to and he inspired and motivated my grandma uh, mm -hmm. to start this. And then it flowed on to my mother, my aunts. Everybody had some kind of uh, the, you know, relationship with clothes, with fabrics, and with mm -hmm. weaving. So, and that's where I start now. <laughs> with the third generation. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, before I go ahead with my next question, what you're wearing right now is absolutely stunning. What, what kind of... What, what kind of a sari is that? Yes, uh, this actually was designed by my mom. Oh, okay. me. Uh, I love the colors that she used. I'm not as talented as her. <laughs> I try oh. to be, but the colors that she uses, uh, been, like it's really beautiful. And um, it is called the Assam silk sari. And um, it is woven, it's hand woven. Uh -huh. person has woven without any electricity use. So um, it's woven in the villages of Assam and it's woven, intricately woven with, uh, I'll show you my uh, pallu mm -hmm. or the yes. sari if I can. Yes. Uh, it's oh. intricately brocade woven. Oh yes, it's brocade. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is how uh, sari, it's very intricately woven. It's a very beautiful midnight blue this is, sari. This is beautiful. Uh, these are the weaves that we 
normally do in our villages and uh, they are very skilled craftsmen artisans are very very skilled back home in, in the village of Vassan so yeah. yes they do an incredible job every day it's, it's beautiful yes lovely so was um, now now that i know that your grand mum and um, the rest of your family was involved in in you know designing and in in the fashion field really to to put it you know so was was fashion always a part of your life also or did you you know, looking at your grandparents and your mum and all, you developed, you know, that thing, or did you just have that eye for it? Uh, that's a great question, Imali. Uh, uh, as I said, it started, the weaving process started with my grandmom at that time. Women never used to weave. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud that she started that. But eventually, when it came, came to my own household, it all starts from your home, as it says. Sure. Yeah? Every good thing starts at your home, right? Yep. So this, uh, the fact, the you know, the, our dresses when we were little, mom, our little, uh, our, our three sisters, my mom always used to stitch them, always. Oh. And those are dresses which are, at that time there was no uh, computer or WhatsApp or any Vogue magazine, you True. know, in town. So she was so creative that she used to give the latest trends on those uh, movies, umbrella, you know, all different kinds of cuts, all different kinds of trendy cuts were done by her. And we were looking fabulous until unless I, I, I was 13 and I started complaining that I'm not going to wear any stitches. We all do that, yes. <laughs> yes. So it has started from my uh, home actually, and then uh, it remained with us. And my uh, fashion, of course, all my, uh, my whole family, mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say fashion, but we, one thing for sure I learned from my dad is always dress up your best at home or outside. Love it. The best every day if you dress up well. That's that's what I do every single day. That's such a beautiful thing that you've shared my viewers. I hope you're all listening to that one. Be it home or outside, let's always dress up the best because we're doing that for ourselves. Great, Tara. Um, so Tara, uh, you focus on fusion style of fashion. Uh, am I right? Uh, not always, but yes, a part of, part of it is yes. All right. So, so what made you decide to mix the East and the West styles and how, how did you see um, success in creating this fusion? Uh, because I traveled the world mm -hmm. and um, it has, I gained a lot of experience, especially in, I observe a lot of uh, trends, a lot mm -hmm. of colors, what not on the magazines, what actual people wear, what people wear in downtown, what people wear in the country. And different, uh, different uh, cities and different villages and different countries have different flows and different colors that I have right. noticed. And these concepts, I had it in me, mm -hmm. and I try to develop them on my weaves with different blends that mm -hmm. I create and different blends of colors, different kind of blends of weaves that I create on these silks, uh, from the silk yarns, yeah. and gives the best color as food. Yes, when you say about the fusion, yes, yes I do use a lot of European colors. I love the European um, shades, on yes. whether it's the red shade or whether it's the uh, pastel shades. I use those and I try to uh, combine our age old traditional uh, motifs, our mm -hmm. 15th century motifs, and try to get the things together. So this is, uh, this is, this you can call it a fusion sari, but right. yet it doesn't look fusion. Yeah, so in it, fact, it looks so stylish and, and it's so, so modern. modern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, in fact, it looks, uh, it looks modern. Whatever you wear, it should look modern. Yeah. In fact, the stripes and the border. I mean, this is something that is that has been striking my eyes so much. It's absolutely yeah. lovely. Yes. So, it's um, awesome. yeah, Tara. Tara, um, um, living in Canada and um, getting work done from the villages in India must be difficult. I'm sure. So, how how do you set your expectations clearly? and get the embroidery or the designing, you know, whatever it takes done, the way you visualize it. Yes, yes. Um, I had spent the year 2018 and 2019, a part of 2018 and almost all of the 2019 mm -hmm. between my village and uh, the city of Delhi. Delhi is where my studio and my workshop is. Okay. Um, yes, uh, that's in South Delhi in Shahpuja. Mm -hmm. and the weavers are in the village so the most part of my time was spent in the village uh, training a very tiny group of weavers 
they were skilled they knew everything they don't need any fresh training but i had to actually brush them up on giving international product the finish the finish right. that we get outside that you know that is something yes. different even in singapore the yes. expectation of those quality products has to be above standard yes. so uh, just giving the singapore example uh, the finishing is something that we normally don't get in india now probably right. yes yeah. but still it's a long way to go but that's mm -hmm. what my focus area was everybody is a skill weaver but who True. can give that finish that mm. nash look you know that polish yeah. look yeah. that was i what i focused on and yeah. i knew that if i train my master weaver yeah. he sh or she should be able to you know supervise all these and we have cameras in place so i can help them i can intervene with them and I am, I, my day starts at 3 a.m. in the morning. Really? And, yes. And I do work up to 16 to 18 hours a day. It doesn't okay. come free. <laughs> Nothing comes free. Of course. But I'm glad that I'm spending that kind of time because uh, partly with the weavers and partly with my uh, studio, mm -hmm. back in Delhi. So, and then I have my team starting at 9.30 in the morning in Toronto. So, yes, that's where my designs and my creativity starts. And, yes. So that's wow. how I my day goes, and I'm very happy to be part of that day. So, so like you said, nothing comes easy, and um, you have devoted your time, energy, thoughts, process, everything in here, right? And and that's why we see where you are. <laughs> Fantastic, Tara. So, and and by the way, my viewers, you know, Tara has a passion to uplift the weavers back home um, from the remotest villages of Assam. Tara, could you share with us a little bit about this? Um, what what you've done for them as well, along with you know uh, your passion uh, designing. Surely, um, that is something very, um, uh, very important for me. Uh, it's a core part of my life right now. Uh, uh, more than my passion designing, uplifting of the skill weavers, uplifting of my curry girls in Delhi. Not only the weavers, but the curry girls. They equally work in Delhi. Right. So I have to appreciate each and every employee, every, each and we are like a family. I, do, I hate to call them employees. They, we are a part of a family. We regard, we, you know, we are um, talking with each other every day, discussing mm -hmm. ideas. They give me ideas and, uh, you know, it's, it's a part of the team. It's just, right. I cannot do a full design on my own. It is through discussions with the carriers, through discussions with the weavers, how it's going to work out, what's going to look like, yeah. These are, and these people are my core people. That's why I always, it's my passion to uplift them. And it's a very difficult topic you came with because that's my, uh, everybody said like your passion comes out in your eyes when you talk about your weavers. And True. that is me because without them, I'm nobody. I'm really wow. nobody. Yes. And I want to take them to all over the world, wherever I am, to give their names out, uh, to, uh, you know, give them encouragement. And one piece of this kind of saris or mekla chadars that uh, the mm -hmm. two-piece traditional dress of Assam or any wedding gowns or any uh, Catholic wedding gowns and wedding lehengas, each and every piece has a part of that artisan and everybody who buys these pieces are supporting the families back in the villages of Assam, mm -hmm. back in Delhi, as well as in Toronto. So right. it's a whole team that, you know, going behind Tarabhmi at the door. True. So, yeah. and, and I think um, you have generated employment uh, for women also, right? I mean, I, I was reading about you and that's where I um, came across an article which mentions about how you have generated um, uh, income, you know, for women um, who, are, who, who are at home. Tell us more on this also. Yes. Um, most of my weavers are women weavers. Okay. So um, some of, a, a few of them are widowed women, abused women. Who, uh, who are widows and very sad story for them. So another interview I have, I will share with, with them, uh, with you guys. But uh, uh, the first thing that I gave them, and that's what they say in there, that you gave us financial freedom. Oh, lovely. It's it a big so one. It's important for men or women. I'm not gender yes. biased. Any man yes. needs money. Any, we all need money for our yes. living. Or a basic living. We cannot yes. live without money. Right? Yes. So if they are without money, they are dependent on someone, and then someone they start abusing that woman. Yes. So 
you know, that's what they said. And I was so happy that we I gave them financial. It's not me. The whole team gave them financial freedom. But, and each and every customer who buys from me, yes. that's what I said just before this, that they are giving financial freedom to so many women back home. Very well said. That's and lovely. I'm very and, with women. Yeah. and they're very diligent to work on each and every single day. And we can see it in the pieces that you make because uh, we have uh, we have your customers you know, here in Singapore and um, um, they speak very highly about what you have designed for them. And for my viewers, you know, if you go on her website, which I'll be providing the link below um, after the video, um, just, just to let you all know that she has some amazing colors, you know, with which she has, she has designed um, lehengas uh, that I was looking at and some gowns. Um, you should have a look at those. Really, really great work done there. Yeah, um, Tara, um, uh, what is success to you? I mean, I look at you as a successful woman and um, I also know that you inspire a lot of people, not only women, but men and women both around you. Would you agree with that? Success, I do not know. Success is like if I go through my agenda every day, if I could do something productive every day in my life, that itself is success for me. I do not know any other success. Uh, but if you say other than the uh, success is a very big word and I don't know, uh, that, that's not my aim. My aim is to go ahead doing what I am doing every day and getting it bigger and expanding it as much as I could. If I could expand those industries, those artisans, the number of employees, employment, uh, the number of financial freedom I can give, then even to men, uh, around the world, mm -hmm. that would be a real success for Tara Mia Kutor as a team. Right, wonderfully said. And uh, would you agree that you inspire a lot of people around you? Wow, <laughs> that would be amazing. And uh, that's nice, that's nice to know, thank you. <laughs> you do, because that's, that's what I read about you and that's what I hear about you from your clients and how how they feel you know, about the whole fact that um, you're generating uh, employment, you are bringing um, people you know, out of their homes to do you know, better for themselves. Congratulations to you and may you keep doing that. Um, Tara, um, um, please leave a message for the viewers and the upcoming fashion designers. And um, yes, please, please go ahead. Um, a humble message that do the best you can every day uh do what you like to do would do what you love to do in fact because then it never remains a job never it's never a chore for anyone if you if you do it with passion hard work perseverance integrity and keeping yourself as humble as possible and service service to the world that should be the purpose that is my purpose that's tara bhunya kutor uh, team purpose is serving the world the best. Okay. That is my humble message to and that he sends to anyone, not only fashion designers, not only upcoming fashion designers, but everyone. Sure, that's such a lovely message that you leave behind. And although I, I need to kind of end this at this point of time, but I still have something that I would love you to share with my audience, and that is um, the Miss India uh, finalist had, had uh, worn um, a design that you had created. Could you, could you tell us about how that felt and what did that look like? And um, the spring time is coming in. So do you have a spring collection that's already ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Manika Shirkan, uh, she became the Miss India first runners up uh, mm -hmm. and Miss India Grand. So she's going for her next, next contest very, very soon. Um, she's been groomed by my mentor, Lisa Verma. I have oh. to mention her name, but she's my mentor and guide from oh. Lisa Verma Academy. And uh, she wore my one of my outfits in Kathmandu, in a ram show in Kathmandu. And uh, Manika was wearing an Assam silk wedding lehenga. Uh, it was a lavender and uh, intricately brocade work done on it. I think I could have shown you a picture, but I was definitely share it. Uh, at a later, but it's on my Facebook. If anybody goes to Tara Bhunya Kutor or my personal Facebook, I don't know how much is visible on my personal Facebook, but yes, and my Insta page also is, uh, I think Manika's photo is there. Right. 
Yes. So uh, it's a very, very pretty piece of lehenga that uh, she wore and she looked outstanding on that. And oh, she sure. carried it up there, you know? Yeah. Uh, the second question is uh, spring collection. Yes. Yeah. Uh, around the corner is Holi and Eid, both huge festivals in yes. India and around the world. Yes. For all our communities. Um, I do have to, lots of collection coming out. You do? And a few has already come out, all the pastel shades, because summer is around the corner as yes. well. Yes. So we have to remember some beautiful colors like Royal Princess Pinks. Uh, cucumber, mint cucumber color, oh sorry, forest trees on it, an intricate brocade work, yet it looks rich, yet very light and very, very comfortable to wear for any summer weddings. We are expecting right. a whole lot of summer and late spring and summer weddings this year because of COVID. Yep. So, um, so everything is getting overlap, but I'm trying to supply as much production has to be going on in full swing. We are a little short on supply and then the demand. We are trying oh. to cope up with a, a huge gap that we are having right now, but uh -huh. we are expanding. Yes, uh, Tarabhya Kutor has just opened uh, a new studio uh, in Shapurjat uh, with a, a trendy uh, and retro look studio. It's very fancy. We are soon going to have uh, our e-commerce website actually coming up uh, in the first week of April, uh, which will be tarabhya.com. And okay. people would be able to buy it directly, and okay. they would all they can always contact me on WhatsApp. So I I always love to get in touch personally with clients. Yeah. One reason why I'm touch, touching base in this is Himali. It's very important. My clients ask me every time. Uh, it's it's a testimonial from my clients that um, okay. Sarah, you give time. It doesn't matter what I buy. I mean, the smallest thing to the you know the smallest small budget item to the big budget item. We really didn't care in the very beginning. I watched, I observed you. Why do you do that? That was a question placed by my client. Uh, this, mm -hmm. And I had to tell her that this is my passion. I want my clients to look the best in whatever they wear. So along, along with what I give as a sari, I also recommend what mm -hmm. type of colors will look good, what type of grooming will look good. This is all creates the beauty of a woman, I feel personally Absolutely. and yes. that's reflects a relationship with the person and a connection with the, my client and that's what I try to keep doing every single day. Lovely. Thank you so much, Tara. You know, you have not only really left a wonderful message behind, but you have created more trust in, in the products that you make because what you make, you don't just make it because you know you think it's beautiful, but you want somebody else to look as beautiful as they can and have the confidence of carrying themselves, you know, confidently ahead. Um, creativity is intelligence, having fun. And uh, we can all make out, you know, how much fun Tara has with her creativity, along with a lot of hard work and dedication. Tara, we wish you the best for all your endeavors ahead. And viewers, you can visit her on the website, which has been mentioned in the description below, and see her designs and place your orders. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and share the video ahead. Thank you, Tara. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, Mali, and uh, Namaste to Singapore. Thank you.